Hey kids, it's the Drive to School podcast and I still have no friends. Let's talk about something that the Bible doesn't actually say, but everybody thinks that it does. One of those things that I get uh, uh, quoted at a lot that isn't actually in the Bible, but it, it comes from stuff that's in the Bible is love the sinner, hate the sin. And um, there are places where you can find both of those things, that you are to love sinners, that that uh, Jesus straightforward says, uh, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Um, both of those things are, are things that are done by sinners. Um, if, if somebody hates you, hate is a sin. Jesus himself recognizes that uh, to hold hatred in your heart towards an enemy is to hold murder in your heart. It's just lazy murder it hasn't gotten up to actually do the thing it wants to. Um, but at the same time, the, the Bible speaks in a way that, that tells us to abhor what is evil, to, to hate sin, to flee from idolatry. Uh, the problem is when we try and stick the two together and figure we're going to somehow walk that balance because love the sinner, hate the sin always sort of pops up in a way that I love you, but I don't like the things that you're doing. And that's a really simple thing to say, and it, it can be completely true. The, the problem is that um, how do you sort of disassociate somebody's actions from their character? When somebody sins against you, it hurts. And sinners that we are, we're not supposed to pin those sins on them, but we try to. And whenever we talk about love the sinner, hate the sin, what we have then is a person that is in our life that we want to be very close to, but something that is keeping us very far away because sin breaks stuff. It pushes us far away from each other. When we love the sinner, but hate the sin, we have a hatred that doesn't have a place to go. And that's either going to fester in our heart, which is bad. We, we, we establish that or it's going to sort of boil out sideways when we we say that we are loving the sinner but hating the sin but in actuality we are hating the person causing the sin uh and it's it's so easy to do because sin hurts and it it's something that that god himself does and that's where we can actually finally talk about love the sinner hate the sin jesus is real good at this i am not Jesus is real good at this because he loves me even though I sin against him all the time. But he hates the sin so much that he he bled for it, that, that he actually poured out wrath for it, that, that the father uh, executed judgment upon the son and the son willingly bore that punishment so that the hatred of sin could actually have a place because it needs one. If, if you're just going to say, I hate sin, but you're never actually going to put it anywhere because we won't put it on you and it's just going to exist, where do you think it's going to go? It has to go to the cross. Love the sinner, hate the sin is something Jesus does for you. And so when you are left with this, you have a, a, a sinner then who is loved by God and a sin that has been punished by God, but it is finished. It's done. It happened on the cross. And now you have a place to place that sin when it actually hurts, when it needs some hatred. And now we, we have a place for everything. And now when we talk about love the sinner and, and hate the sin, instead of this, we, 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 uh, we have to start with Jesus loves the sinner. And Jesus died for the sin. Jesus bled for the sin. And you are a sinner that Jesus forgives. Whenever we, we talk about these two things that are, are mished together in person as if we can somehow walk this path, you're setting yourself up for a hard one because like, it's, the fall is going to be great because we need a place to put our sins. They're, they're real things. And so instead, we have a cross. We take our sins to the cross, we take our neighbor's sins to the cross, and we pray then, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And that's not like a, because I have done this, so also forgive me, but rather all forgiveness comes from the exact same place. All forgiveness comes from the cross. Forgive me my trespasses from the cross and let me look at my neighbor as if their sins were forgiven there too. Then you get to recognize it's gonna be messy because my heart doesn't always wanna go along with this. That's why I actually have to pray to remind myself, my neighbor's sins are forgiven from that cross too love the sinner and then when you wrestle with the sins and where to put them take your own hatred your own frustration your own pain that boils out sideways to the same cross that jesus died for for you and your neighbor and there find some peace this is not about how you navigate but how jesus navigates the the mess that we make by our sins jesus loves the sinner and hates the sin when it comes to you recognize that you're going to do it wrong because sinner then love your enemy period. Do good to those who hate you, period. And when it hurts because somebody has sinned against you, and when you see sin that, that is wrecking something that, that is precious to you, your, your 
you're you're supposed to hate that sin but when the two get too close together that you can't pry them apart take your sins to the cross and, and recognize that he has already done this perfectly so that you don't have to try and manage that sin has a place it belongs on the cross so instead of thinking that you can cast it off the sinner when we need jesus to do that just take everything to him